Uh, hello, uh, uh, here we uh, are today for the Wednesday webinar. Uh, today we have uh, uh, a bad news with us. One of our volunteers passed away today. So Amit will say a few words uh, about him and we will have a one minute uh, silence. And after that, we will proceed with the webinar. So uh, actually a different note today altogether, something unexpected, sad numbing happened that uh, we lost um, Rakesh, Rakesh Malik who was a climate friend, volunteer, a very selfless person as we have been knowing him and also a very good friend of us through his work and uh, the way he used to express. So uh, very briefly, I mean, we all have his our own experiences with him, but uh, one of his works that I just wanted to highlight, uh, you might be remembering him carrying his climate clock all the time with him to different uh, events we have been having in different groups and also recently uh, Rekha Joshi, uh, Nishad, myself and uh, Rakesh, we had been trying to reach out to people uh, in Tadiwala Vasti before the floods happened. So the way he used to express, the way he used to you know, take all the pictures all the time, uh, I keep remembering that moment right now. So yeah, maybe there is so much to talk about him but uh, it's a very difficult day, very difficult time. So let's have a pause of one minute in his remembrance and then we can continue. Okay, so I think we'll start that one minute of silence. Nigger. So uh, we will start with uh, today's webinar. Uh, today we have uh, Manisha Shed with us. She is a founder of Eco Exist, and she's also director of a very innovative project called as Punara Vartan. Uh, so Manisha, I request you to first introduce yourself and then uh, let us know about Nigger. this. Um, wonderful initiative of Punaravartan and how it could help all of us, especially in these days of Ganapati Utsav. Thank you, Prajakta and uh, Shailajatai and Amit and the others. Thank you for inviting me and giving me this opportunity. Um, I can see that I am among friends here, Sanjeev and Smita here, Kalyan Mani people who are um, already familiar with the work that has been done. So um, I'm going to be speaking to you as I would to a group of friends. Uh, I'm also happy to see that many of you are already very active. So I'm sure that you're familiar with the basic principles of environment conservation and uh, nature conservation. Saili Patpardhan is also here. She has been helping out a lot. I'll just start by uh, introducing myself. So my name is Manisha Shet. I've been in Pune since 2001. I'm an architect by training, actually. Uh, however, when I moved to Pune uh, through the Ecological Society, a whole new world of uh, nature conservation opened up. After I finished the course, I worked with the Kalpavriksh Environment Action Group with Ashish Kothari and others there for six years before I started Ecoexist in 2006. And since my training is in, in design as an architect, um, my work mainly has been with materials and with products, looking at how materials are designed, how products are designed and their impact on the environment. Uh, so that's just kind of a brief background. I started Ecoexist in 2006. So this will be our 18th year of work. We have done various campaigns um, uh, of which Punaravartan is probably 
uh, the largest and it's also the latest campaign which we've been doing for the past five years. This is the fifth year of Punaravartan. So I think with that, I'll just share my screen uh, knowing that I have limited time. Uh, so what I would like to do today is to just uh, take you through three sections. I've, I've kind of divided the presentation. So in the first part, I just want to uh, kind of uh, discuss uh, the idea of circularity with you, uh, the way I understand it. Um, I think it'd be great if this is more of a discussion. Um, it's not really that I'm an expert in any of this, but having worked on these issues for quite a while, I have certain thoughts and realizations that I'd like to share. So in the first section, I will, we can just kind of explore the idea of circularity. In the second section, I'm talking about ritual and specifically the ritual of Visarjan, which is the most impactful uh, ritual in the Ganesh Utsav. And in the last section, I'll introduce you to you to um, Punaravartan and what we are trying to do in Punaravartan. So um, basically, uh, there are several cycles already that we are living uh, out every day, right? So the larger uh, cycles of nature uh, and the rhythms of nature, this is something that we uh, uh, we all experience. And then uh, our own life cycles, the human life cycle. And then the life cycles of the things that we create. So whatever materials and products that, that we are creating. So these cycles are existing simultaneously. It's not like one follows the other, but we are uh, experiencing them simultaneously. And a river, since all of you are working on the river, so uh, a river is kind of the most uh, evident uh, landscape element of this cycle because it's, it's flowing. I mean, in its natural state, it's always in a state of flow. And of course, as you know, it's part of the larger uh, water cycle. These are images of uh, the Mula Muta in, in Pune, uh, as it was so many years ago. Um, and when we experience the river, we are, we are, uh, our limited experience is, is of it in a linear way. It, it starts somewhere, it's going somewhere, it, and it merges somewhere else but it continues to be part of that uh, larger cycle that, that the water cycle is. And then in a river, the ghats are really those points where, and being an architect, I actually first started by a study of the ghats. This map that you see on the right was uh, created by us in 2007 when um, Lolita and I had first begun the Ganesh uh, Utsav study. So we had started by just going to the various ghats, looking at what the situation on each ghat was and, you know, where the immersion was happening. So it's really the ghat becomes the point where uh, human lives can connect with the landscape. And especially in a city, they become very important. Uh, now, this larger cycle that nature uh, is constantly like that we are experiencing in nature. Uh, interacts with these other smaller cycles, which is the human life cycle, as well as the cycle of the materials we create. And the problem arises when any of these cycles experiences a block. So if we are, um, you know, creating products where the cycle is not, uh, it's not a, cy uh, a cyclical process, it's not a circular process, then it gets stuck in linearity. And this is really where the uh, whole concept of waste comes from. Because in nature cycles, there is no concept of waste. Uh, and in life, cy life cycle engineering, which is what now more and more materials design and product design is beginning to look at, um, they are now realizing that you cannot just um, start with, uh, say, production and end with uh, disposal. That last bit between the disposal and then uh, going back to the raw material, that last part of the loop has to be closed. So this is when uh, circular economy discussions began, when um, cradle to cradle kind of design concepts came into being, where designers realized that they were also responsible for closing the last section of that loop. So this, uh, we're looking at the materials uh, uh, life cycle. And of course, all of you must be familiar that the differences between a linear economy and a circular economy. And uh, a linear economy is usually about taking, making and disposing, whereas a circular economy is getting into things like reuse and repair. A linear economy looks at just a one-way flow of resources, whereas in a circular economy, you're talking about 
constant reuse and a cyclical flow of resources. And it is really a linear thinking which generates waste, as I was saying earlier. Also, a linear economy has a limited value because it is throwing away things and disposing of them, not recognizing that they still have value. Uh, whereas a circular economy, which is which is more modeled on the way nature functions, is that there is value to absolutely everything. So there's a constant value that remains. Uh, linear economy encourages resource consumption and uh, a, a circular economy speaks about resource conservation. And of course, things like obsolescence in technology comes from linear thinking, whereas when you go into a circular economy, you'll start looking at repairability. So when you're looking at materials design, these are the kind of changes that come in. I'm very um, saddened to hear about uh, the fact that you lost your friend today. And as, as I was uh, staying silent in that one minute, I also realized that how much a part of our lives uh, dying really is and I lost my own mother two years ago and uh, that was a very powerful experience where I really understood that unless we embrace death and destruction and degradation the cycle will not complete so if you if you want to live forever which is what we are trying to do with the way we design materials that we make durability so important that we are not interested in the way it degrades or the way uh, it will close the loop. That's when the problem happens. And this mentality, this attitude or this mindset is at the, uh, it, it's like the bottom line. So if we want to change the way we use natural resources, we have to, you know, also change our approach to death and find a way of really embracing it and um, allowing it, you know, in, in our uh, philosophy of life. Um, so I just want to bring your attention to the uh, question of whether circularity, is it a new concept in India? And I would say it is not. Uh, and uh, also, as I was saying earlier, circularity uh, is a reflection of a mindset. And that mindset, uh, now most of us who have been educated in a very Western type of education, in a very linear kind of thinking, we probably, to some extent, we have lost that mindset, which allows this circularity to happen. And what is the main thing in that mindset that allows circularity? It is the willingness to let something go. Because unless you let it go, you will not make space for something new to take birth. And the reason why this has become so important to me is because I have been studying uh, rituals particularly, as I said, the ritual of Visarjan. And rituals are, uh, in a way, uh, they, they deeply impact your psyche, they, they affect your mind, and they affect the way you think. And so when I was um, looking at the ritual of Visarjan, I asked myself, why is it really that we do Visarjan? Now, I don't come from a very, uh, I would say, ritualistic family. So this was not something that we grew up doing. We, we would not have Ganesh Utsav at home. And, you know, so this was new to me. So when I started this work, I started to ask people, Ki aap visarjan kyon karte hain? and I was surprised to see that most uh, often people did not really know the answer to that. So I realized that it was not being done in a very conscious way that, you know, hote aara hai, paramparik hai, isile ho raha hai. So I started to ask that question a little further, that what is this whole idea of Visarjan about? And uh, I, I found that that word Visarjan uh, comes from a Sanskrit root, which is Visrija, which indicates or it uh, kind of alludes to the fact that um, letting go or um, you know surrendering or dispersal um, casting off. These were the kind of meanings that were uh, associated with this word visarjan. And at a very uh, kind of philosophical level, it was finally giving up one's own identity. And here again, it's, it's really interesting that we would start by saying goodbye to someone because I actually experienced the power of visarjan when, when it was time for me to do the asti visarjan of my own mother. Uh, a lady who was completely against ritual and so would not, she had signed up her body for um, organ donation 
I convinced her otherwise. And when I did this ritual, I began to have a glimpse of why this is so important in uh, Hindu philosophy and culture, and especially in the Ganesh Utsav. And when I started asking and, and studying further, I found quotations like this from um, Acharya Vinoba Bhave, where he said that Hindu teaching links together uh, the importance of the image and then the ultimate unimportance of the same image. It is not to be smashed violently, but to be relinquished reverently. The practice of invocation and immersion is a symbol of great beauty. We must seek the detachment which will enable us to relinquish when the time comes our own best creations. So uh, really you start realizing that this ritual, uh, which is still being practiced by so many thousands of people, even if they may not intellectually understand why, Obviously, it is doing something to them or it is giving them an experience that is still very important to them. Uh, now here, I'll just skip some of these slides because this is about Ganesh Utsav and you know what it's about and come directly to this belief that at the end of the ritual, uh, Visarjan has to happen. And when we first started working on Ganesh Utsav, uh, you know, me and my, uh, my friend Lolita, we would be on the ghats talking to people and trying to convince them that please nadi mein visarjan mat kijiye ab haud mein kijiye because back in 2007 we were still at that point where people were insisting to put it in the nadi and uh, we came across several different kind of mindsets uh, from some right wing organizations and you know we started to question why is it that people are so insistent that it must be in flowing waters and uh, if you really start looking at that uh, ritual in itself what is the experience that it gives to people? You have something that was so beautiful and which you worship with so much love for 10 days. And then at the end of those 10 days, you're surrendering it and it's flowing away from you. It's being taken away from you. And you start seeing that the form of that, that beautiful form for which you had, you know, put in so much effort, spent money and really given it your best is now dissolving in front of your eyes. And so you you had formed an attachment and then at the end of those 10 days, you were willing to let go of the attachment. It was not that you were throwing this away. This still has a lot of value to you. It is still something that you respect deeply, but you are saying that there is a larger order and I'm willing to let this go and surrender to that larger order, right? And then it's not something that it's just an individual doing, right? It's the entire society, the whole community, the whole, the whole city is out there saying that we are collectively letting go. And as a society, this is a very important and powerful thing for uh, the society that collectively you celebrate, whether it is a, a friend or a mother who has passed away or whether it is the Ganpati that you are doing the Visarjan to, you are collectively saying, yes, we let go now, right? So this, uh, you can see now uh, the fact that so many thousands of people are doing it. This is not something that I grew up doing, like I said, but I have to respect the fact that it is meaningful to so many of my fellow Indians. And I have to try and understand why, what meaning does it hold for them? And so this, this collective bonding to one artifact, which is the Murti, and then the massive scale at which it, it is being celebrated at. So um, these are images from Chennai. So you again, there you can see uh, those cities that are on the, uh, you know, they're, they're by the seaside. So there it becomes very, very difficult to monitor what is going into the ocean and the sea. So these are images from Chennai. And uh, in 2015, this festival was estimated to generate 20,000 crore rupees annually. So you can see what a huge, huge event this is, not just in Maharashtra, but across the, the country. And it was expected to grow at the rate of 30%. So... Uh, having kind of considered that this is what the ritual does to the people, this is the kind of experience it is offering to them, then you come down to the actual material itself and say, okay, what about the artifact? How is it that something that you respected for 10 days and you, you offered it your best, the day after the visarjan is over, the day after the ritual is over, nobody seemed to care. Right. And so then the kind of images you see after, which I'm sure many of you are aware of, uh, you start wondering that that what has happened here. And you start realizing also that 
in fact it's not that the ritual is a problem it is that the material has changed and so the material which was natural at some point of time and it was biodegradable and it was a much smaller scale of the ritual now from the natural material it has shifted to an industrial material and this industrial material does not biodegrade or um, you know the the time that it would take to uh, be absorbed back into nature is a much uh, longer time span so here's when you start thinking that material cycles which are which is you know the 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 life cycle of whichever material you're using or the product you're using has to respect the human life cycle right because it's we are talking about the well being of us and our our life span is only say 80 years so even if the pop might take 200 years to dissolve within those 80 years it's not going to dissolve so that means it does not respect the human life span and neither does it get easily absorbed back into nature it would take a much much longer time eventually nature will reabsorb everything it's just that it won't do it in the human lifetime and so of course images like this which you've all seen and i won't uh, spend too much time on this but but these are images from juhu beach in mumbai uh, which are which were on youtube and this is what you see right so uh, also the impact on marine life again these are images from the environmentalist sanjoy monga he took these images in 2009 of um, uh, marine life and the effect it had on the marine life so this uh, brings us to uh, what have we been doing about this and um, in 2020 so in 2010 i believe already there was one round of uh, prohibitions that had come up from the ctcd but which had not been very effective uh, and so there were there's been a lot of litigation back and forth and uh, on our website you'll see we've done a lot of in depth research into many of these aspects and so we've also studied all the litigation around it uh, but in 2020 they finally uh, you know strictly supposedly strictly uh, prohibited the use of plaster of paris idols for immersion uh, uh, toxic chemical paints were prohibited single use plastic in thermocol for decorations uh, they asked for a uh, regulation of the size of the idol and the littering and burning of solid waste so all our work in punaravartan is based on the uh, on this cpcb immersion guideline that we've been working towards and then in 2022 we also did a survey and we asked people well, what do you think is there an ecological impact of the ganesh festival uh, 60% said yes there was but we were surprised to see that 40% still were not sure about this and when we asked them where do you do the visarjan um, about 43% had started doing it at home but still uh, Let's say fifty-seven percent were uh, not doing it at home, and then we also asked them, "Well, do you know what happens to your idol after visarjan?" And here there was pretty much confusion. Some people felt it was uh, put into the river. Some people said it was put outside the city somewhere. It stays in the water, and many people just didn't know. So we've we've been doing regular surveys to really find out what is the level of awareness around all this. and then what are the emerging alternatives so there are two ways in which change can be brought about to a festival and a ritual like this so one is that you change the artifacts which means that you change the materials and the products that you use and the other is that you change the ritual script itself which is the process in which that ritual is played out so uh, while the first is uh, relatively simpler because you can replace the artifacts with other artifacts or other materials the second one uh, which is the ritual script this uh, there is a lot of sentiment attached to it and and for good reason and so one has to be very respectful and very careful before we suggest change in that and what we realized is that that change has to come from within the community itself we as environmentalists cannot go in there and say you know this is wrong don't do this or don't do that so my approach to this festival has been more uh from my identity as a hindu rather than that as an environmentalist i would say we also did a uh, a study of many different materials uh, as i said i started working on ganesh utsav in 2007 so this is 17 years of work and we looked at 
the pros and cons of many many materials and also to realize that there is no one perfect material every material has its pros and cons depending on where uh, the source is the way it is used the way it is disposed of and the impact that it can have on different aspects of the environment so um Um, so in the ritual script, what we were trying to tell people is that, uh, why don't we do the immersion at home? And this is, this was by the time we had started working on it, people had already considered this. There were many, many groups working, uh, on this issue. We were not the first ones. There were people across the country that were trying to bring in change into this. So doing home visarjan. And, uh, here's where I enter the last section of my presentation, which is Punaravartan. So uh, after home visarjan, then what do you do, right? So um, uh, this is where we uh, came up with the idea of punaravartan. And punaravartan is a Sanskrit word. Uh, we picked it up from a shloka in the Bhagavad Gita. And that particular shloka talks about how everything in nature goes through a, a, a cyclical kind of evolution. And... Um, and so punar avartan and this is again not an unfamiliar concept to us most hindus do believe in uh, a life after life so it talks about rebirth reform and then of course at a material level about recycling so this was the the shloka that we had picked up in nature all things undergo growth dissolution and renewal so coming back to your idea of circularity so when we asked the people that would you be agreeable to recycling of the materials if it was done in a respectful way we were happy to see that nearly 68 percent said yes they would and uh, amongst the others only about nine percent said no we don't we wouldn't agree with this but there was a general willingness to recycle uh, now, here I just want to share, you know, the difference between uh, letting go, like we were saying, Visarjan is about letting go, versus the idea of throwing out. And uh, uh, the difference between these two mindsets or these two attitudes is that you let go of something, but you acknowledge that it still has value. It's just that you're letting go of your identification with it, your sense of ownership with it. Whereas when you throw something out, it's it comes from a very different space, and it's it's one that you know um, does not respect that 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 material or product still has a value. It may not have a value to you, but it still has value. Uh, and so here I I like to share that when uh, we started with Ganesh Utsav, one of the first projects we started working on was on Nirmalya, which is the flowers. And this word Nirmalya, which is a Maharashtrian word, Marathi word, it it really means. Uh, uh, mal nahi hai, meaning that which is not stained in any way, it is not waste. So these offerings are not to be considered as waste and they are not to be treated as waste. And that's why it's it's so important that we use the right kind of word when we are speaking of something. And when we started this Nirmalya work, uh, we had started with the Swatch Cooperative back in 2009. We began this work and for three years, we used to collect all the flowers uh, from all the ghats and take it to the prison because at that time Ecoexist was working in the Yeravda jail with the women of the Yeravda jail. It was a simply fantastic experience for them because the whole jail would be filled with these flowers and we taught them how to convert. We also worked with the rag pickers of uh, Swatch itself and taught them how these flowers could be converted into many different things. And this is just to show you in 2010 when we had begun it, we had collected about five tons along with Swatch after five years, we handed this project over to Swatch and Cummins, who took it forward. And last year, they were able to collect about 150 tons. So the success that we saw with this particular material, which was the flowers, we were hoping to replicate this success um, in another material, which was clay. So this clay, which is called uh, Shadu Mati in Marathi, is not actually from Maharashtra. So most of the clay that is used for, at, at least in Western Maharashtra and Pune and Pain, the Murtikars, they use this particular grey clay, uh, which is bentonite and which is mined. So it's it's coming to us from mines in Gujarat. So uh, when the Central Pollution Control Board established the, the immersion guidelines again and 
said that they would finally ban POP. The expectation was that most people would turn back to clay because this was a more traditional material they were familiar with. And so we thought that more and more people would turn back to clay. And then in 2020, uh, we had a few of these murtis with us and I was, you know, constantly working with the material, playing with the material and try asking myself what can be done. And since we work very closely with the murtikas, we asked them, Ki, kya aap isko, iska punar vapar kar kya? To unhone kaha, haan, ye to hum karte hi hai, humare yahan bhi itne, itne damages hote hai, to wo hum fake nahi dete. It's very easy to do this. So, uh, we uh, tried out a first set of recycling that happened, which was in 2020. And in 2021, we had a, a, we did our first collection, which was only 30 kgs of clay. This still just, uh, it's skipping some, I'll just show you how, this is the process by which we are asking people to collect the clay. so that to, to kind of the process that we've been asking people to follow very simple can be done by everybody and uh, so really in Punravartan, what we are doing is we collect this kind of clay from home visarjan uh, and it is collected at various locations. So at this point, I also want to uh, kind of uh, thank Jeevit Nadi because Shailaja Tai was one of the first ones to, you know, really support the effort that we were trying to make. And in 2022, when we asked for help from the rest of Pune, so 2021, we collected 30 kgs of clay. We made the murtis again. We saw this can be easily done and the murtikas were ready to do it. So the next year, which was in 2022, we put out a call to everybody we knew in Pune and said, please help us to do this. Can we do this together? And so many organizations came forward and Jeevit Nadi was one of them. Uh, Shailaja Tai uh, was there at every meeting and you know we went together to meet many of the officials. So Jeevit Nadi has been a big part of this. Uh, and so now the effort has, so that year itself, we were able to collect 23,000 kgs of clay. We were completely blown away. We had no idea that this was going to uh, be so welcomed by the people of Pune. And uh, we had spoken to a few murtikars and so we were able to send the clay back to them. And then the next year, um, we also decided that uh, the PMC has to take responsibility for this. So we uh, pushed the PMC and we said that you have to collect the clay from the ghats also because we were aware that, uh, you know, they don't really have solutions. So their solution was that they were just sending most of it to landfill uh, and it was a waste of a, of a good resource. So uh, I remember Shalaja Tai was kept on asking for barricades on the river and now slowly we are beginning to to see these barricades coming up. Um, so in the government collections, there are these houses, like you know, uh, also to let you know that Pune is really far, far ahead of most of the cities in Maharashtra, because now we're talking to many other cities also. Uh, and so these houses, which are placed in different part of the city, this is how the clay looks uh, after the Visarjan is over. Uh, and we were really able to collect uh, a lot of clay. So again, in 2023, we were able to, uh, not just in Pune, but also in other cities, clay was collected. 
uh, and so we realized that this is definitely something can be that can be done and uh, this is how uh, omkar salunke who's one of our youngest murtikars who was the first one to say yes i will accept it and i will recycle it this is just a clip of him how he's been doing this for uh, several years now so the murtikars also uh, have welcomed the idea just like to mention that uh, last year uh, the chief minister had set aside 1.8 crores of rupees to give out free clay and uh, we told them that it was a complete waste of money to do that and that if they would rather spend that money on recycling the clay they would be able to save all that money now the clay that comes from the public emotions uh, is 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 a mixture because haud mein tarah tarah ki murtiyan jaati hain so that was not easy for the murtikas to reuse so we started to look at different innovations that could be done different applications uh, okay. that we could experiment with and this was sent to product designers uh, to see whether ceramic ware could be made construction blocks were made um, wall plaster was tried so all this experimentation has been going on for the last year and these are just um, Uh, an image of the murtis all these murtis are made uh, with recycled clay and they perform equally well in fact some of the ceramic designers told us that uh, in ceramics there is a process called slaking which means that they actually wash the clay so when the clay is washed uh, its strength increases because uh, its um, adhesiveness increases increases after its slake so in a sense Uh, there's no need to be concerned about the performance of of recycled clay so with this i think i just like to conclude uh, these are my learnings from this effort uh, the ganesh visarjan ritual is inherently a circular ritual it comes from a circular philosophy it becomes a problem or you know it starts to generate waste because the material has changed it's not that the ritual is a problem it's the problem is that we have replaced uh, a more natural material with a more industrial material uh, to be able to keep our natural water bodies clean we have to prevent materials from being put ex any external man made material have, has to be kept out of the river before it goes into the river and becomes a problem inside the river so in a sense what punaravartan is trying to do is to keep all of this away from the river right before it creates a problem uh another thing that we are looking at and trying to bring back is this idea that sirf murti pavitra nahi hai par nadhi bhi pavitra hai right so that idea in fact uh, lord ganesha is considered to be the deity that presides over the element of earth from the five elements Ganesha is the the deity of earth. So we are trying to, you know, really go back to these original thoughts that the festival had behind them, and uh, you know, remind people about them so that this idea of sanctity to nature comes back. And we are finding that since India is still, uh, you know, a, a communities uh, really still believe a lot, like a lot runs on belief systems and on faith. So if we are to speak to them uh, and appeal to them. Uh, you know to conserve nature uh doing it through their tradition and through the you know original uh, source of that tradition if one approaches that these traditions can be actually a very powerful way to bring back that circularity which is already inherent in the culture itself so i'm not sure if i've gone over time but i think this is uh, where i end these are this is just a snapshot of all the organizations that are with us this year also uh, we are in uh, 13 cities uh, this year we presented the work to the chief minister and the deputy chief minister and they have instructed uh, that all of maharashtra should implement this so the maharashtra pollution control board has now sent out a letter of instruction to 43 municipal uh, corporations uh, that they must implement punaravartan uh so we are now starting to do hand holding for these municipal corporations who reach out to us uh and we have also appealed to the central pollution control board to list this as one of their best practices on their um, website so uh i think with that i'll stop here thank you very much for listening so patiently i know it's been more of a one way thing but i'd love to um I'll stop sharing here now and I'd love to have a conversation with you if we still have some time
thank you, Manisha. This was uh, so useful and so powerful. Generally, you know, whenever you talk about uh, environment, uh, especially when it is uh, uh, related to some festival, people always think that you are criticizing our festivals, you are criticizing our traditions and our culture. But you so beautifully explained that actually this is our culture. Circularity is our culture. That is our tradition. That is our faith. Mm -hmm. And I think it is um, extremely important. If there are any questions, please uh, type it here in the window because I think most of us are muted now because because we had uh, uh, some problems before some other people joined in here. Uh, so please type your questions and then we'll take it one by one. Meanwhile, I'm, uh, I just have a request. The video where you showed how to immerse the um, idol at home and then how to collect, uh, you basically you dry that uh, shadu mati. And uh, so could you send that to uh, me? Maybe I will say uh, uh, publish it on all our social media and WhatsApp group along with the uh, locations where we can actually give that clay. So once we dry, where do we take that from our home? You know, I think it is very important so that everybody can follow uh, the, the same. Yes. Because so as you said, are most of, you are most do it in the bag. Are yeah, most right. of the audience from Pune or you also from other Yeah, parts? yeah, most are from Pune. Uh, if there is anybody else outside Pune, please let me know here in the window so we can uh, take a list of locations from your city as well. Yeah, someone is from Hyderabad. Okay, so in Pune, there are two, uh, there are four days on which you can actually do this. Two days, which is tomorrow, the 12th and 17th, the PMC has given us 50 locations where Marty Sankalan will happen. So uh, all of this is on our, our website has become like this real treasure house of, of uh, information and, and data also. So uh, these two days, the PMC locations you can go to. Otherwise, on Sunday the 15th and Sunday the 22nd, we have 60 locations across Pune as well as 24 locations in PCMC where our volunteers will be standing and receiving the clay. And uh, yeah, Project, I'll send you all the uh, information. There is one particular question here that I really want please, to uh, address. Sorry, please send, uh, uh, can you please send locations from yes. as well? Yes, oh. yes. Yes, I'm, I'm looking at the chat box here. Great. There's one question that I think is, is very relevant and we must uh, address it. I think Ritika has uh, rightly pointed out that clay, doesn't clay erode the topsoil? So, um, Ritika, you're, you're, uh, you're on the right track. So, the clay that I'm talking about is actually mined. It's coming from, from mines. Okay, and mining has, as we all know, uh, a huge negative impact. Uh, uh, the topsoil. So, nowadays, you will see that many people have started using what they call lal mati. So, lal mati is agricultural soil. And that is topsoil. And topsoil is very important because it is uh, fertile. And maybe in, in, in that list of comparative materials which I had shown you, one of the criteria we were looking at was fertility. Because if, if, the, if topsoil is fertile, the most important use of it is for agriculture and not for any other kind of uh, non-essential product like, say, a murti. But... Um, mm, also, I want to tell you, Ritika, that we were very well aware that clay is not the most ideal solution. If you look at all those materials, now, what is the most ideal way of performing this ritual is if you have a permanent murti in your house and you do a symbolic visarjan. And Hinduism has room for this. You know, there is the beauty about the Hindu philosophy and culture is that it allows a lot of questioning and it allows a lot of reinterpretation. And it will actually de demand that, you know, aapke yug mein sabse appropriate kya hai? Aapke samay mein appropriate kya cheez hai? If you're seeing that aapke koi uh, krutya se wo kahin pe haani ho rahi hai, koi bhi uh, jivatma ko, to wo, it's not the best thing to do. So you are allowed to reinterpret it, right? So the best thing, ideal thing is to say that I permanent murti rakta hu. and many Hindus are already doing this. They, they just simply keep a supari next to it. They do a symbolic emotion. They use the same murti the next year. Okay. However, there are, because there are so many angles to this, right? So we have a community of some brilliant murti cars. So now one of the things I did not mention is this year we have done a survey of 98 murti cars in Pune, Pain and in Sindhudurg. 
and the work is simply phenomenal so that art form the craft you know the 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 talent of making a murti is a cultural heritage and you don't want to lose that either so one has to keep on balancing all these things so like i was saying those three cycles that we are simultaneously in somehow in that punaravartan logo it all comes together and one has to find a way of of balancing it so eventually we will phase out of clay also because it's a non renewable resource it's in limited supply the whole country cannot use clay it's not possible so what our effort has been is to go step by step like stop using chemical stop using pop if people are switching to clay then at least tell them to reuse the clay so that we're not taking fresh clay you know then the next thing may be paper mache or the next thing may be cow dung but then the final thing should be a permanent item right so it's going to take the community some time to feel comfortable with that ultimate solution which is let's keep a permanent idea so hopefully that answers your question um uh now there was one question do you sell these recycled murtis so uh, i forgot to introduce uh, in my introduction i forgot to mention that i run two organizations so one is the ecoexist uh, foundation Uh, and the others eco exist enterprises when i first started i had already spent 6 years in the ngo sector and i had seen that it does not address market forces it does not address commerce and since i am a designer at heart i had started eco exist as an entrepreneur right and so as a social entrepreneur we were looking for what are the right materials and is it possible to create a market for these materials so when we first started recycling the clay i realized the murtikar pehli pehla prashna mujhe yahi puchne wali hai ki madam ye kaun kharidega agar hum unko bolenge ki recycle clay to koi humse kharidega hi nahi so my first thing was to say main aapke liye bech dungi so i started by actually announcing that this is a recycled clay murti will you buy it and when i saw that yes people were willing to buy it because they saw that it was as strong and as beautiful as a fresh clay murti they didn't have a problem so i realized that yes there could be a market for it um we continue to market uh, but at a very small scale because now more of, more and more of our work is on the education part and the campaigning part uh, but we are also uh, showcasing all these artisans we are putting out their numbers you know on the website so people can directly buy from them also uh i think that covers it so uh, gunjan in delhi we have not yet found a partner uh in mumbai supriya we there are people many people who have actually reached out to us but in every city there has to be one individual or one ngo that says i will take the lead now what's happening is through maji vasundhara abhiyan maji vasundhara has now allocated 50 points for the city if they are able to uh, collect and reuse the clay so that's been a great boost in the arm for us and then through maji vasundhara we are doing trainings for many municipal corporations and so now even if there's no ngo or no individual there the municipal corporation itself is saying madam amala karai se ami kaise shuruat karu sir so so in some places the municipal corporation is starting somewhere it's an individual somewhere it's an ngo but one really has to create a network and once again i want to say that the only reason why it became so big and so successful is because we were not doing this alone i mean without jeevit nadi without oikos without ecological society you know with so many people who were part of it this is why we became successful so in a sense it's really the the community of pune and the culture of people working together being willing to work together so this is what we are telling every municipal corporation that you will have to create your own network you can't do this alone so we have to find you know the right uh, networks for them to work with i think shailaja tai that pretty much covers most of it if there's anything else that you can think of smita no, no. kalyan no i think you there. have yeah. you have done it beautifully and most of the questions are also have been answered and as uh, prajakta rightly pointed out uh, we do keep sharing but it keeps missing sometimes or the other so prajakta will again share all the links of the film how to collect the clay the centers which are uh, going to collect the clays on particular days so that also it can be shared uh, with prajakta she will keep sharing on the facebook and other social medias which are there because there is a still time and we can still utilize that and try to collect maximum clay as much as possible whatever is more is better for 
all of us probably <laughs> sure sure nishad yeah, had if... some questions any difference yeah. in... tumhi bolu shakta nishad ji ab aap pooch sakte hain because i'm not very clear about the question yeah uh, the recycled clay is it any different than the normal clay or uh, regular clay no and, so uh, actually, do you do you uh, form any other murtis in it or uh, just ganpati out of it i mean any ornaments or something like that ha uh-huh. so right now we are not doing anything we don't make the product we just give the clay back to the murtikar and then the murtikar decides what he can do with it so we don't like have a workshop or anything our role is to collect everything uh, sort it out properly and give it to the murtikars so uh, they are and and the quality of the clay like i told you that every time this clay is put through a wash so it's put through water and it comes out again it's actually a better quality than the previous one so in spite of that what they do is they add in one some percentage of fresh clay is added to it but we've had absolutely no problem with the recycled clay so there's no loss of quality in this recycling आणि निशाद काय होतं की ते विन विन सिच्युएशन होतं कारण आर्टिझनला परत गेलं ना की एक तर त्यांना फ्रेश क्ले खूप एक्सपेन्सिव्ह आहे परचेस करणं हे क्ले त्यांना मिळतं मग फ्रेश क्लेचं क्वांटिटी पण कमी होते सो त्याचं थोडीशी इकॉनॉमी जे ती म्हणते की प्रायसेस ऑल्सो ऍक्च्युली बिकम कम्पॅटेबल फॉर द पीपल टू परचेस सो अँड again it is not getting into the environment it is getting recycled again so that is a uh, all win win situation in a sense exactly apan kai demand kele to kai vegla ornament tayar karu mhetil tyachya madhe ha try karu shakta i see any kind of enterprise that you can create with this uh, most most welcome to do it so uh, what we that's why they they get na hote na amcha kadna je पीएमसीच्या लोकेशन्स वरती म्हणजे हौदात जे गाळ निर्माण होतो त्याच्यामध्ये कधी कधी लाल माती असते किंवा गोबर असत तर ते ही लोक घेत नाही आहे तर ते आम्ही हे सगळे आर्किटेक्टला पाठवलंय आणि ते एक्सपेरिमेंटेशन सुरू आहे की त्याच्यातनं काय काय बनवू शकता सो इट स्टील गोन टेक कपल ऑफ युअर्स टू रिअली काइंड ऑफ क्रॅक इट अँड से ओके दिस इज द बेस्ट वे टू युज इट सो बट एनिथिंग लाईक इवन my uh, idea is that any application which uses a, a large bulk of it and then kind of freezes it in one use is best so if you get into small small things like ornaments or something you're you're going to use a very little amount of it whereas now we are collecting this year we are aiming to collect 50 tons of clay so how many ornaments you know so it's i think we have to have a diverse range of applications and uh, if for example if you can create some enterprise for some underprivileged group teaching some women to make this why not it should definitely be done uh, i think we'll have one last question which is about flowers i think we didn't answer that before it is saying that um, what what would be the use of those flowers the collected flowers होली के कलर हम बनाते थे उस वक्त बट इट वी इट वॉज नॉट फाइनेंशियली वायबल आफ्टर थ्री इयर्स वी रियलाइज दैट दिस इज नॉट द राइट थिंग टू डू सो देन वी स्टार्टेड मेकिंग कॉम्पोस्ट एंड आई बिलीव स्वच्छ हैज बीन मेकिंग कॉम्पोस्ट ओनली आउट ऑफ इट uh last year actually ecoexist enterprises started a new experiment with the flowers that we collected after the sera and we have started uh, dyeing fabrics from it and that is also beautiful so that's like actually a better value addition than compost because compost will only uh, they'll only help them to earn this much money but if you can convert it into fabric dye that's a better value addition so there are many things you can do with the flowers बट द द चैलेंज विद द फ्लावर इज दैट वो जल्दी जल्दी करना पड़ता है आप उसको स्टोर नहीं कर सकोगे सो क्ले इज क्ले इज ईजियर टू यूज बिकॉज यू कैन कीप इट कुछ नहीं होगा उसको डिग्री मैंने फंगस वंगस कुछ नहीं चढ़ेगा मेनी थिंग्स यू कैन डू है do we see all all these things um on on an i mean on an annual basis but uh, we uh, act uh, do not act that is the sad part 
Um, so I am I am an uh, I'm a PhD student actually. So I am looking at uh, this uh, from a different angle. So okay. in the initial part of the uh, presentation, you mentioned about the impact of the um, uh, immersions and then the Nirmali surgeon and all those. Uh, so my question was, did you conduct any specific study which uh, which got some uh, maybe data or did you publish it somewhere or uh, where can I find those uh, I mean insights about those studies? Um, you know, if I if if I have the permission of the organizers, I'll just quickly uh, just show you guys the website. So five years of work is all on this website. And uh, I uh, have to say that there is something there for everybody. So yes, we have actually done a lot of studies. And I'll just uh, quickly share this with you. And you can, you know, whenever you have the time, you can look at it further. But um, under if you go under campaign tools, I hope you can see my screen. Yeah. See my screen. Yeah. So under campaign tools, you will see that there is research and there's legal history. Yeah. So uh, 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 so uh, under research, we've done surveys like I was sharing. So we've done uh, public awareness surveys as well as we've done uh, this year. We've done a survey of the artisans. Uh, under legal history, we have uh, really looked at all the different uh, public interest litigations that were filed uh, on this issue and uh, we have written about it. We also had a webinar around it. So uh, which specific kind of data are you looking at, Nishant, if I can ask? Um, so uh, uh, as of now, actually, I'm studying the um, environmentalists and environmental organizations in Pune. So yeah. um, I'm not looking at any particular data, but I just uh, I was just curious about what sort of studies were uh, actually undertaken? So yeah, yeah. So see, um, we we were actually uh, advised to do data collection, uh, and like I was, mm. I mean, if you're sh like this, is the public willing to recycle? Is a is is a survey that was conducted, and then this uh, the data collected in this was actually analyzed by uh, a friend of ours in Chicago. So she's a data analyst, and she taught us how to analyze that data and really make correlations and kind of understand mm. what the data was trying to tell us. Uh, similarly, we've done a life cycle analysis of, uh, of clay and of plaster of Paris. Uh, we have uh, also done, like I said, a survey of the artisans and uh, uh, this data has also come in uh, from three different regions. So Pune, Pain and Sindhudur, right? So, uh, at the same time, having said all this, uh, I think I, I uh, tend to feel that data is useful at times, but it can also be misleading in many ways. Uh, so uh, having worked on an issue for 17 years, uh, I'm now beginning to kind of understand that there are so many nuances, you know. You like you know to you and me this could be such a simple thing. Kare nahi dalna chahiye, nahi dalna chahiye. Bees saal se kare nahi dalna chahiye. Phir bhi ye ho nahi raha. Kyun nahi ho raha? You know. So right. when you start studying it, you realize ki itni saari baatein hain usme. It's not hmm. so simple. Ki apne mana kar diya aur band kar diya, right? Like I've yeah. I've now been twice in a meeting with the chief minister, and at those meetings there were Ganesh mandals were there, murti cars were there, all the municipal commissioners were there, and you you. Early start seeing everybody's perspective and point of view, their hidden agendas, all of this, right? And then you realize, okay, it's not so simple. You can't just, you know, kind of cut it at, at its root and say, bas, band karo. So you can't do that because there are so many. So these nuances don't come out in data because data is very kind of unidimensional. And so one has to be careful and you can collect the data. But you have to validate it with your own experience over many, many years of work so that the nuances can also come in. So anyway, that's my personal opinion about data. Yeah. Okay. Th thank you, Manisha. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm just uh, going to request Shaila Jatai to uh, conclude this because uh, we are a little over yes, time. Yes, yes, we are. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Shaila Jatai? Yes, yes. Thank you. I was trying to switch on my video, but Manisha, as usual, beautiful presentation. Uh, you being a designer, you have uh, actually explained the circularity, the spiritual importance of it. Uh, as a Hindu, what is our culture talking about it? So we have actually traveled 
from her history culture till today's time in a beautiful wonderful way and thank you very much for giving this and yes we will be taking such uh, movements and campaigns forward very actively so thanks a lot manisha thank you shalaja tai and thank you for everything that all of you are doing to to, to take care of our rivers we really owe you a lot so thank you so much thank you thank you uh, this will be on youtube tomorrow so uh, I'll, i'll share the link with everybody thanks again thank you thanks again thank you good bye night you. Yeah. bye bye bye